Uh, here we go. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's such a great crowd on a, a snowy morning, which is really random. And um, but here we are. So what better way to spend your morning than to come to the library and learn about uh, before you check out, uh, which is our our series that we started. Actually, Margie and I started it many, many years ago. And um, the last time we did these classes was probably six years ago, I think. And um, so we've learned a lot, and um, here we are. So this is this program I kind of call the kitchen sink of the whole series because the first one obviously was um, the legal piece. We have a healthcare piece with the hospital coming up in April, um, a legacy, writing your story, your obituaries, or your life story, leaving a letter for your family is um, coming up in May. And then one that we've gotten so many requests for but have never quite done is what to do with your remains. So we'll have somebody that talks about burials and uh, cremation and also donating your body to KU Med Center. So there's lots of interesting options out there and we'll talk about that as well. Um, a couple of housekeeping details. Um, this is being recorded, so you will be able to access it on the retirement, well, I guess, I'm sorry, retroactive um, uh, playlist on YouTube. Um, so if you speak or have a comment, please use the microphone because otherwise it won't get picked up on the recording. So that's super important. Um, the other thing is we kind of want to crowdsource this a little bit because just just a show of hands who's had kind of a really bad experience with managing somebody's estate or you know your parents or anything like that yeah um i kind of jokingly called this the glamour do and the glamour don't presentation because um margie's husband george died a couple of years ago and they were very organized really organized and it went really and i'll let you speak about that Meanwhile, in my corner, <laughs> I was the executor for my aunt's estate. Uh, she had no children. Uh, there were 15 heirs, um, not all of whom were cooperative. And eight years later, it is still not finished. And it's not like a Bill Gates level estate, trust me. <laughs> it's not, it should not be complicated. So um, a lot of this we learned by experience um it is not perfect this is not a complete list this is just as great as we could do for now but what we encourage you to do is as we go through each section if you have a piece of advice please share it and we will just keep adding to the list and pretty soon i think together we'll have a really awesome kind of list of instruction to, to instructions to go by so i'll turn it over to margie well i just want to say can you hear me okay uh Yes, Kathleen and I put this uh, an iteration of this program together about six years ago, and after attending the one we had a speaker come and do this something similar to this, I went home and my husband and I put together our first before you check out list, and he called it our kick the bucket list, I have it our folder here. I would say that much of this is probably common sense to you and many of you may have already done this, but you'll find that you'll hopefully find at least one or two things today that you need to add to your list or think about but mostly i hope that you're motivated to go home and do it and i would add it's not just for old people you should encourage all the members of your family to do something similar uh, i would say also that i am just a volunteer i have absolutely no expertise on checking out in any form uh, but I will give you my experience uh, as we went. Because we had done this list when my husband died about a year after we had done our list, things were relatively easy. Uh, and I will say that if it's someone you love and care about, you're in a blur. So you want to have as much of this ready to go as possible. All right. So I, we just sort of explained our game plan. So we'd love your input. Um, Nancy Hamilton, who is one of our wonderful board members, is back there, and I think she can bring the microphone around um, to you if you have a question or if you have a suggestion. So, all right, here we go. Okay, number one, and you'll see this more than a couple of times, um, check the beneficiaries on all accounts and assets. 
super important. Um, we had a situation with a woman who was a staff person at the library who started her job here when she was 24. She um, didn't, she put her parents on as the beneficiaries, and then she actually died here in the library when she was in her 50s, had gotten married, and her beneficiaries were still her parents, and it created a lot of unfortunate conflict in the family. So um, always check those. I mean, we our first will said Kelly Morgan is my oldest child Kelly Morgan and subsequent children um, so it's good to, it's good to kind of double check and update on a regular basis and your beneficiaries are a good place to start okay so safe deposit box and again you don't have to necessarily have a safe deposit box like we have a safe in our house something like a firebox something like that um, or else put things in a safe deposit box and then maybe my parents had a red notebook, you know, where every, there were copies of everything in there and the list of, you know, what, what the location of various things. But just for, you know, ease, we um, found this lovely photo of a safe deposit box. And in it, this is just a list of all the different things you may want to stick in there. It's, it's this ability you want to put as much information in one place as possible. Um, I remember when my parents, they would go down to Florida for February and my dad would always call and say, Kathleen, the red notebook is in the safe. And I'm thinking, oh, for God's sakes, here we go again. But I was really grateful because we knew where the red notebook was, you know? So um, that's super important. Put it all in one place. Um, if you do use a safe deposit box, please, please tell somebody where the keys are and where the safe deposit box is because my lovely aunt, I found two sets of safe deposit box keys and no identification. And so I called her bank and I noodled my way to the right one only to find that she had already emptied the contents before she died. So, which was great, but it's just like, you know, when you have some skeptical cousins looking at you, it's good to have that information of like, hey, where's the bank and number two, um, where the where are the keys so that's um ideally it'd be great who have somebody you trust be able to be on that account so it makes it super easy to access um, they don't have to have the keys but just be a signer on for the safe deposit box and that that makes it a lot easier all right yeah i would add that <clears throat> excuse me there are things i changed on the list after george died mm -hmm. because some things we knew about each other Margie. I needed to put here. Yeah, use the sorry. Mic. Yeah, I needed to put them. Uh, so there were changes after he died because there was just myself alone. So you want to be aware of that. And then I put my son on my safety deposit account. So somebody you trust needs to be on that account if you're the only one, particularly if you're the only one left. Um, now we'll move to help. Any questions or oh yeah, advice or or suggestions? suggestions. Please don't be shy. <laughs> Is it good to just put one person's name on that safety security account box? I would check with your bank. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, I'm, I'm one of seven children. And I think at one point there are four of us on my mom's bank accounts because we were paying different parts of her bills. Um, so yeah, I, I think people you trust, that's the big thing. And also your bank's requirements. Nancy's gonna. It is everything's live. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're going to go through item by item on this list. Um, um, however, the living will, the power of attorney for health care, and the power of attorney for financial affairs are things that you need before death and should true. not be in the safe deposit box. They should be available for your trusted person to be able to find in case they need it. Right. And no, they I. They may not have access to the box. Okay. Before then. Actually, that's a great point. Um, and some of these documents you do want to keep in a safe place but yeah if you if that is the case then be sure to share your information with somebody you trust and have them on that no, yeah, thanks I, thank you for that clarification very much so i keep one in my glove compartment for example yeah, yeah. okay all right on forward ho okay health care um just noting where all of your records are 
Uh, I would say one of the things that was surprising to me, and you may already all know, is that you have to repay your the money you receive from Social Security the month they only pay through the month you die. When let me just say, if you die in July, for example, you get your payment in August, and you have to repay that. So it's generally a good idea just not to cash that check if that's possible. But the one thing you need to do is just be aware that if there are co-pays, Medicare will pay until your death. But if there are co-pays or deductibles, you need to be prepared to pay them. So if it's your executor or whomever uh, in charge of that, they just need to know they have enough money or resources to be able to pay that. And also you need to have someone or you uh, tell the, your, your um, supplemental plan that there's been a death. Medicare and Social Security is a separate thing from your supplemental plan. I think that's it. Anything else on that? I don't think so. Prescriptions, et cetera? Dental plan, it's all kind of, um, and it's then- pretty, all... self, pretty self explanatory, but does anybody have any suggestions or comments or questions about that section? Names of doctors, other healthcare providers, that sort of thing, just so that you have a complete kind of roster of that information. Yeah, it may seem like you don't need to know when that money is taken out of your account for those payments, but if you are incapacitated but still alive, someone will need to know when those payments are due and when they'll come out of your account or how they're paid. So that's why that's always there, the withdrawal dates. Okay. This one was not on the list last time, and we decided it needed to be. This is my my dog Madge, <laughs> and, and she's um, not dead. She's not. Picture. She has not checked out. Trust me. Um, but this is her last night. As a matter of fact, I was looking for a photo, and I was like, "Perfect, thank you." Um, but your pets—that's really important. As to you know, they're not only have like the veterinary office, but also who's gonna. Who do you want to be the guardian, I guess, you know, is there somebody who's agreed to take your dog or cat or rabbit um, when you go? So it's something we didn't even think about last time, but um, I would want to make sure that Madge, Madge usually hangs out at Larry Schroeder's house, who's here today. And <laughs> so, you know, I want to make sure that, that she's well taken care of. So just something to add to, the, to your list. Larry, are you the guardian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my daughter has two sick little dogs, and I do not want to be their guardian, but uh, insurance. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, one of the things that I would add under other, um, where it says life insurance, long-term care, boats, additional vehicles, or homes, storage units, one year, the year before George died, we were traveling abroad. He was teaching abroad and he got very ill. And to get home was very difficult. Uh, my mother also had a stroke when she was in the Grand Canyon and we had to fly her home. Those experiences showed me that I wanted to avoid that issue. So I started getting emergency ass assistance insurance. I got it through AAA, I get it every year for $129, they will fly my body sick or dead back home from any place in the world. So to me, that is really insurance that I want, may not be of interest to you or necessary, but it's one I wanted to mention that isn't on the list that I feel very good about having. Yes, it's called emergency assistance and I have the card in my wallet, I can show you after. I got it through AAA, but that's not who I pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also called evacuation insurance. Um, so it's, it comes in really handy. Okay, next one. All right, um, passwords uh, and for your accounts, and that includes you know how to get into your computer um the logins that sort of thing uh email accounts i know oh my gosh my mom's facebook account was up for for almost a year um, and they do have a process that you can go through where you email them and say hey um you know my mother has died and you produce a death certificate and that sort of thing but it's a lot easier if you just have the 
password and can just delete the account. Um, um, also, your bank accounts, like anything that you sign into that we're, that somebody may need access uh, to pay bills or anything like that. And one suggestion that we've kind of bumped across is naming a digital executive. That's kind of a new thing in the executor world to kind of handle all the information, your, the digital stuff you might have. A lot of people have like their family photos, especially if you come here to the library and digitize them um, in, you know, in different files and need access to them. So it's not only financial, but it's also shows social media and then just your your family family records um, of your photos and slides and things like that. So again, that's that was a relatively new thing six years ago when we did this, and now it is a fact of life and I think something that's super important. Hang on just a second. Let me. Yes. I also wanted to point out anybody who has like an ancestry.com account or whatever, Good if point. the owner of that account passes away and hasn't identified, you can't access it. We had that happen. Our cousin, who was just a master at, at Ancestry.com, passed away. We can't get into the account for the family information, can't update, can't change, because she didn't identify someone. Oh, wow. That's great. Ooh, Thank point. you. That's a really, really important point. point. Hang on just a second. I'm going to grab Chris. There you go. I, I believe that Apple now has the ability to have you register a... Uh, executor from a distance that then will be able to access all your f forms photographs recordings whatever i'm not sure about android though well that that would be really helpful for me so i'm glad to know that I'm yeah thank it. you i know some people have password programs you know where you they do your passwords for you i don't i still keep mine in a little tiny book and write them all down and they're all weird my kids give me a lot of grief about it, but they need that book in order to access a lot of my information. Okay. Okay. All right. Home ownership. If you own your home, you want to keep your homeowner's insurance until the house is sold. So make sure that if you're the, like I'm alone, I need to make sure that my beneficiaries know that they need to keep it insured until it's sold so that nothing if something happens there's property damage or someone is injured there you are still covered um, another thing that came up in one of our little things that we were reading is that you don't want to turn off your utilities if you are still using that property yes my friend back here is nodding i think she had that experience when she was uh working with her father-in-law's estate so those are just two things to keep in mind you want to make sure that you're insured until your property is sold. And of course, again, make sure that people know where the keys are and what the keys go to. Because I, when I moved, I had this whole bucket full of keys that are now given to my grandchildren because I had no idea what they opened. So uh, you might want to label your keys. All right. Um, moving on to bank accounts. Um, again, this is just a part of the list of your all the various banks that you um, patronize, their addresses, the account numbers, what kind of accounts. Um, it's what's interest or what's important here is also um, knowing the difference between a co-owner versus a co-signer on your account. Um, if you appoint someone to pay your bills while you're incapacitated or you know needing help, um, if you want them to inherit the the amount of money that's left over in the account should you die then they are a co-owner if you just want them to pay your bills um, and just be and sign checks they are a co-signer so um, that's a really important differentiation depending on what your wishes are so kind of keep that in mind when you add people to the account whether you want them to actually inherit the money or just sign for the time being until your estate takes over um, Next one is credit cards and bills, same thing. Um, this is just, again, a list of all the various credit cards you have, the account numbers, login information if you have it. Some credit cards you, you might have on auto pay, so you wanna make sure that you know, that is stopped. Um, 
also um, having access to it to the account online so that you can kind of monitor it and to make sure that you know nothing is going sideways with it. So, um, and then bills, um, online bill pay information, like for example, our utilities and um, water and all that is all automatically taken out every every month. And obviously you wanna kind of keep that going for a while until you sell the house or your apartment or condo or whatever. But um, in the end, you'll have to turn that off and that way you'll have all the account numbers and all that sort of thing available to you. Um, and then the last thing, which is something I learned the hard way about, is the taxes. Um, if you can, have have a record of having paid your taxes. Um, and, I, you know, usually it's three years you're supposed to hang on to it, depending on if you're more complicated, it's six or seven years in terms of having uh, the number of copies of your tax returns. Um, with again with my aunt we had no idea that she had whether she had paid her taxes and as executor you have to sign off saying that the taxes have been paid and all of the debts have been paid um she had gotten kind of a um a windfall of money from the missouri unclaimed property because she hadn't been paying attention to some dividend checks for decades <laughs> And she had not paid taxes on that. And so, what, but the way we had to find out is we had to write to the IRS and ask them. It's like, hey, did this get taken care of? So it's a lot easier if you have copies. Um, I just talked to my cousin last night and his brother had died and he had not paid his taxes. So they had to pay a tax bill um, because that was part of, you know, cleaning up the estate. So you kind of don't think about this, but um, it's important just from, from your family standpoint that they can, just you know, know what's going on in terms of whether you've paid your taxes. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's it can't emphasize enough that this is a gift you are giving the people you leave behind. It's really important to think about it as paying forward. I think that was for me. Uh, okay. Next, memberships. Um, oh no, we want to no. do uh, investments. Investments. Sorry. sorry. Made one little thing. This is this is my my version of an investment. <laughs> we hope it's not yours. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. You just need to leave a list of all of the things that you think you have investments in and loans that you may need to have repaid or you, that you still owe, debts you owe, or loans that need to be paid to you. Uh, and again, one of the most important things is make sure your beneficiaries are up to date on everything so just always check a friendly reminder okay and i think you're doing well, memberships yeah. too right so this one is one that occurred to me because i was trying to figure out some uh, sort of distance planning and i realized i have a lot of things that auto renew that i wasn't aware of and it's not only your movie subscriptions, magazine subscriptions. I have an app that I use that I automatically renews every year. So I'm putting the dates that they renew and what that renewal is. So if it's something they want to keep going, they'll know when to pay it. And if not, when to turn it off and how much it costs. So um, also you want to list your frequent flyer programs because if you are left if your spouse dies or your partner you are eligible for many of their frequent flyer points so you'd need to call the airline and let them know so you want to know what their accounts are and of course if you have you probably have other reward programs i didn't list here but um, sometimes there are hotel reward programs as well you can use anybody have anything to list on that or anything any suggestions i don't know i often use the calm app i don't know if you know that one's the one i need to uh make sure that they turn off when i'm gone all right next what are we doing ah fair family heirlooms <laughs> um on valuables, things that you think are particularly valuable, get them appraised in advance if you can, um, because it's, again, it's helpful to know, 
you'll love this. Um, we, my husband is has the very quirky personality. <laughs> For those of you who know him, though, that's true. And a um, long time ago, I can't believe he did this. He bought a 24 inch mirror ball from a roller rink in Louisiana on eBay. Who does that? But we have it. And Scott Morgan. <laughs> we hung it up. Um, the library had a the prom like last year out at 1235 NU, and we brought the mirror ball and they put it up and it was lovely. And the guy who owns it just was salivating over the mirror ball because you cannot buy a like original real mirror ball. I guess they're kind of I don't know, glue gunned on or something. Now I'm not sure. But <laughs> We look it up and the value of these things is anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars so now we're telling our children there's money in the mirror ball <laughs> so keep that in mind it's like um there was a sitcom where the the code was there's money in the banana stand you know where that, that's where they cash it put their cash so anything that you think might be valuable or unique um note that let folks know um and and that would even go for I mean, special things like diaries or pieces of furniture that you just, you, you know, supposedly what the clock on our mantle was a clock that my husband's grandparents, no, great grandparents brought on a wagon from Illinois when they came to Kansas. So all the stories and the importance need, need to be documented and passed along um, so that people know. And the other piece is when you're divvying up property or things, come up with a system that works for your family. Um, I'm one of seven kids. And um, when my dad died, we had kind of like a lottery where we, you know, we were, <laughs> were also democratic, but um, we identified all the stuff that was, was left. My brother's a tech guy. So he like put it in a, you know, like online so that our out of town siblings could see them. And then we picked numbers and took turns choosing what we wanted from the estate. And then the rest we donated or um, there, it was, nothing was super valuable. It was more just, you know, sentimental stuff. Um, but it really worked nicely and there were no fights at all. Um, I know that there's sometimes something that, um, oh, I had a friend who's really loved this painting that her mom had and her mom put like a piece of masking tape on the back and said, you know, this is for Sarah. So there's that option too, um, but just come up with a system that you feel is fair and um, everybody agrees to, because then I think that will really alleviate a lot of conflict because everybody's kind of, you know, it's, it's a, a difficult time anyway, and your emotions are kind of all over the map and having a system in place is really, really nice. So just a, a tip from the O'Leary family. I would add to that. Yep. That in my family, uh, the joke is that there's a rug that we think is more valuable than anything else. And that's so they're always talking about, oh, mom, do they get the rug? Does she get the rug? It's not really. But what we did was get together. I made a list of the things that I thought were maybe important. I don't care what they do with any of it. But then I asked them, are there any things on this list that you would particularly like? And there was almost no overlap. So I just made it typed up a list and said, if this still stands, this is who would like these items, a few pieces of art and one really ugly gigantic necklace that was has been in my family for over 300 years given to the oldest living granddaughter. Uh, it's from Norway, so no one would want it by looking at it, but we made a note that that's its history, so I think those kinds of things are important. Any comments on any of that? I would, okay. uh, may I just add, oh, sure. I would just Absolutely. say maybe uh, have a legacy lunch, you know, just get together with your family when it's really easier to do when everybody's in fairly good health and just have fun with uh, talking about where your list is and where the items should go. Yeah. I... Serve cake. <laughs> oh, Lois, here you go. I guess I just have a question about whether or not you have any advice for people in even larger families um, who who want something that no one would even think is anything other than junk. How do you go about making sure you identify those things? They do have a plan. Well, well, with this necklace, 
I just wrote out a little thing about it and told all my children, I have three children, living children, and I just told them all the history of the necklace so that they'll know it's not junk. But other than that, um, it's up to them. Yeah, yeah. And I think kind of that's, that's where the lottery kind of works, you know, because everybody has an opportunity. Well, if you, depending on what number you draw, <laughs> everybody at least has a, you know, a chance at it, but that's a difficult one. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have really sentimental people in your family and then they hear the history and then that can be difficult. And actually, that's another good reason, like based on what Margie was saying, why it's really important to talk about this probably multiple times um, while people are alive and everybody's feeling good about things. Um, because again, the emotions are what they are when somebody who's dear to you dies and you're not always thinking straight. And I think if you talk about it enough, I, I know there was a woman that used to work here laughed and said, yeah, we're going to have the death talk again. <laughs> like she just did it as, as like, you know, for a particular Sunday afternoon in April or something, I think, because it's National Advanced Directives Day. <laughs> uh, so there's a there's a holiday for you to celebrate. April 15th is the same as taxes. So Boston Marathon taxes and Advanced Directive Day. So <laughs> well, and we File call it our kick the bucket list day. And the, my fifth. Exactly. Call it, so. OK. Here you go. Okay, I would encourage you, even if you don't know yet what kind of burial plans you want till you come to our last program, that you contact your funeral home or the place where you would like to have take care of your remains because they make things much easier for you. Uh, I, that I can tell you from experience. Um, they were just wonderful and you are really in a blur at that time so you, any help you can get ahead of time is very worth it i would say um i would also suggest that you come and hear kathy talk about how to write your obituary even if you don't write the whole thing you can give some outlines so that that's really very stressful my sister-in-law died this past week and my daughter and or my niece-in-law is trying to write her obituary and she wishes she had some stories from her mom that she would want to have included. So even if you do an outline, that's really helpful. And also state whether you want the money spent on a print obituary. It's expensive to list your obituary in the paper. So you might want to make that note to your family. Um, I'm going on here, I guess, aren't I? Uh, then I would say um, this is pretty self explanatory name your church if that's important to you state clearly any different definite wishes you have and one of the most wonderful gifts my husband gave us. Was that in two, he died in 2019 but in 2007 he had heart surgery and he wrote us this letter and I have it in his writing. <laughs> uh, and he just uh, tells us what he wants and he says his organs are probably worthless but i'm giving them to ku med center anyway along with my cadaver for study and he goes on and he says i would appreciate a memorial but not a funeral i don't have any seriousness for that at all that was just him and then he says i don't want any speeches but i want this music and he lists for those of you who are in the audience probably will recognize these titles, get a job, shout, don't be cruel, yakety yak, and on and on, Barbara Ann. <laughs> so, so my son could put together the musical playlist. He said, make it short. And then he goes on to tell us what he wants us to serve there. Uh, he has no regrets. Fortunately, he tells us that he's very proud of us. Um, at that time, we didn't have any grandchildren. He said that was his only regret. He did get to live to see three of them. And then he says, don't forget, I won the last two golf tournaments I was in, the Village Closed Executive Strange Rules Competition and the annual Coggins Oscoda International Open played in Montana. Have fun, I did. And it was a huge gift to us to know that when we did get ready to do this, we were doing it the way he wanted it to be done. And it was really helpful. So I would encourage you to do something along that line as well. Okay, oh, I, I want to say one Go other thing. Yes, it was because of this program and all the things that we've done at the library all these years and I was on the board I should full disclosure I was on the board 10 years ago when we opened the building actually and 
It was because we knew that the library programs are free and open to everybody in our community, everybody, every age, that when we left our bequest, because the library was so important to us and what they had done for us, we remembered the library. Just it was important for us. Thank you. Actually, um, that's on the first list uh, because we too have a list of the important charities in town that are that we've been involved in our church, the library, different different places. And those we have a letter to our kids in with our will that just says, you know, please be sure that you honor these wishes and give give this amount of money to those those causes. So that's that's something else because like it's not specifically stated in our will, but we have kind of an addendum letter that gives a further instructions. Um, and on the back of your your handout um, are the top 10 first things to do at the time of death. Um, we found this in actually there's three uh, book resources at the bottom under helpful resources. Um, it was the making things easy for my family. It's it's I mean the author is product concept manufacturing I mean I don't know who those folks are, but they put together a really good checklist and you can get it on Amazon. Um, or someplace just I, i'm not sure i've not found it any place else but um, it's it's out there on online and it's a real straightforward almost like fill in the blank booklet that you can use um, to pass along to your family there's a copy of it back here on this um, table but um, because when somebody dies you not it's you're kind of scrambling and thinking okay what do i got to do and they had um this list so do you want to talk about that i would just say that this is really helpful that's what you should have first where you can get a hold of it but i would also add that a neighbor of mine went through something with her sister's estate that kathleen did with her aunt and she recommended the aarp book that is also a copy on the table it's much more involved, but if you prefer to have something where you write down everything, your family stories, your family history, and this list in one place, that book might be something you would want to order from AARP. Okay. So, I mean, these, this is a pretty, pretty straightforward list in terms of, you know, who to notify. Always find somebody who could kind of help you navigate this. If it's maybe you identify somebody in your family who's you think is particularly good or even a neighbor or friend who kind of help you navigate things. Um, getting at least 10 copies of the death certificate is super important because you need them probably more than that. Um, and then again, the rest is pretty self explanatory stopping the mail newspapers, etc. So um, just kind of a common sense list, but it's nice to sort of have it at your fingertips. Um, and uh, the uh, handouts for this program will be uploaded to we have a before you check out.org website um, and we also will upload the handout from the legal session with Ann Premer um, from Stevens and Brand. Um, are there copies up here? Okay. Um, if you want a copy of that, like a printed copy, just let me or Nancy or Margie know and we can definitely email one to you. But I guess in closing, we have some time left. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Just one comment, and I have no affiliation, but there is a company called Knockbox, N-O-K-B-O-X. It's next of kin. They provide at different levels this kind of like in a box, tabs, dividers, all this that really helped us work through. And they have a very expensive version that has a fireproof box and all that. I just got what they call the light. And then I went on Amazon and bought a fireproof document holder. And so, but it, it, I'm one of those people that needs to be organized and I needed those tabs and labels and it helped me work through. It has a lot of this. The light version was like $40. Okay. So something Great. to think about, an okay yeah. box. Thank you, that, that sounds like really would be helpful. I'm writing all this down. <laughs> you should be on the there are probably other members of the OSHA Institute here, and they did a program on legacy letter writing just a couple of weeks ago, and it may be available online with the Institute, OSHA Institute based off uh, St. Andrews Drive. They have a website. 
Thank you. Great. Thank you. That's awesome. There's also the Stanford letter writing project. And if you go online and just type that in, it will give you forms for doing that, writing your letter now to people that you love, thanking them for whatever you want to thank them for, your gratitude, and then one that you would leave after your death. <clears throat> but I think they're going to cover that a little bit later in one of the programs as well. Yeah, um, Kathy, I, I suspect we'll talk about that and hers. Um, also, just as a, a sidebar a little bit, we do have a sound and vision studio here at the library that includes a video cast room. And um, we did several years ago, uh, Kathy provide, just made herself available to interviewing folks um, in, 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 that, in the studio. It's, it's really an incredible, incredible service. The lighting is perfect. The filming is perfect. It is professional quality. Um, you can you can reserve it, and our staff will kind of you know walk you through if you want to do kind of like a video um, letter or video testimonial. We've had like Kathy would give um, like couples, for example, a prompt of how did you meet, and then they just kind of chatted and they i can't i mean it was so hard to watch these because they all made me cry they were so great and so think about that option here at the library it's free all you got to do is have a you know library card in good standing which i suspect you all do because we don't have fines anymore um <laughs> but you have to have a library card and um they'll walk you through it it's literally kind of a a turnkey operation and you can sit in front of the screen and tell your story and um, have it available for your family so I know Kathy will talk more about that, but this kind of let that twirl in the back of your mind. See, it's like your personal story core. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, my father-in-law, because his wife had Alzheimer's, uh, did all the funeral planning ahead of their deaths. And it was such a gift to my husband and I. So for 10 years, I swore we were gonna do this. <laughs> and finally, when COVID came along, we did do it. We've planned our funeral, we've paid for it. And I thought it would be so awful to do. It was such a relief. And um, it also, um, you pay for what it costs now. So you're saving your children added expense. And anything they choose not to use out of your plans, you get reimbursed. This was through uh, Warren McElwain. So there are a lot of benefits. And I also want to mention <laughs> that another wonderful thing George Coggins did was write each of his family members a personal letter, which is priceless. So a lot of great things we can do ahead. I was just going to say, if you leave a, a letter about what you want to leave everyone, try to uh, kind of uh, specify specifically what things are. My mother-in-law left a letter. She had all this beautiful glass. And then we had trouble figuring out which piece she wanted us each to have. <laughs> but, you know, we worked it out. We just picked what we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My father-in-law actually kept a list like this. It was about eight pages long. It was very complicated because he had a house, a condo, and a cabin in Norway. And the, what happened that we didn't anticipate is he really started losing his cognitive function. And so then we were able, luckily, to work with that list to understand, yes, this is automatic paid, but you need to pay this once a year, et cetera, and all of these different properties. So it was a, it was not something you, you think you're doing it for after you're gone, but you might be doing it while you're still around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good point. Good point, yeah. Very good point. All right, anybody else? Okay, well, we'll leave you with this. One these one. words of wisdom, <laughs> compliments of Margie Coggins. You have plenty of time until you don't. So for all you procrastinators out there, and I'm one of them, um, yeah, go ahead and dive in. And um, really, I think you'll be really happy that you did. So thank yes. you. Thank you. Yeah, we hope this is the motivation you needed. <laughs>